This whole saga around uh, Abdul Azedi, the attacker in Clapham in South London a couple of days ago, is getting absolutely ridiculous. We're finding more information about him, his background, and the whole story is getting a little bit dodgy, and the government and politicians have a lot to answer for. Now, in this video, we're going to explain how this idiot managed to trick the Home Office into granting him an asylum case, despite actually failing twice. Yes, Abdul with a terrible haircut who managed to harm so many people uh, a couple of days ago in South London. Um, obviously, we exposed this um, yesterday on this channel uh, before the mainstream media did about how he actually failed to uh, get an asylum twice. He was from Afghanistan. The media initially said he's from Newcastle. Now, I knew from day one. He might be based in Newcastle, but he's not from Newcastle. And, you know, of course, we discovered he was actually from Afghanistan. And he failed his first two applications. Now, when you fail even once, why do you even get an opportunity to try for the second time or the third time? Well, we've discovered he basically talked to some human, human rights lawyers and they told him, if you pretend that you've converted to Christianity, you could basically say, well, I can no longer be sent to Afghanistan because Afghanistan is being ruled by the Taliban and that's how he managed to get to be granted an asylum in Britain after the third time attempt by pretending to be a Christian yeah that's a Christian sure now the former Home Office Minister Robert Jenrick who resigned from the Home Office alongside uh, his friend and ally Suella Bravman uh, because he couldn't work with Rishi Sunak anymore uh, he actually said uh, the argument I've been making for a long time is that our asylum system is dangerously broken and needs fundamental reform. It appears from uh, little we know of this case that uh, this is an individual whose asylum or humanitarian protection in the UK was granted by a tribunal, so probably by a judge rather than Home Office officials, despite the fact that he had been convicted of sexual offence and on the basis of evidence which we shall have to see may well be of his spiritual. And yet, that's the one main problem we currently have is the fact that we have to confirm this situation with the tribunal. It, was it actually a judge or was it the Home Office officials? We don't fully know yet. And they, again, everything goes back to the fact that anyone could just pretend to convert to Christianity from the Islamic world and they could just stay here. Now, the sad news is he's still on the run, he's still hiding. And somehow, this country that has more CCTV than citizens, I think it's like 14 per person, CCTV cameras and equipment and everything else, and we've got GCHQ, we've got MI5, we've got the Met, we've got all these guys. Still haven't found them. Still looking for this idiot. And uh, But again, it goes back to the, the fundamental issue of uh, the, this whole individual being in the UK. If you were not in the UK, everything would have been fine. But... The problem is not just the asylum situation, as we said yesterday, it's also about the fact that the Newcastle Crown Court actually decided to say, yes, we are going to convict him, he, he is a criminal, a sexual offence, and then they gave him a suspended sentence. Yes, can you believe it? A suspended sentence. But that's not where it stops, because we have actual barristers and lawyers in this country essentially not really defending him, but trying to shift the arguments and shift the goalposts, saying it's not really about mass migration or multiculturalism. That's not really the problem. I, I mean, I, I rarely watch the mainstream media anyway, but sometimes I have to do it so that you guys don't have to suffer. But I was watching GB News and this Sam Fowles guy, who is a basically a barrister, was uh, talking about this whole issue. And he actually came out and said, well, his immigration status has nothing to do with the, 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 the attacks. So I said... It has everything to do with his backwards and barbaric culture. This idiot on GB News is talking nonsense. And on the issue of his immigration status, it is a scandal that the Home Office granted him asylum despite failing twice. If he weren't there, those and here in this country, those innocent people would not be in hospital right now. I mean, I'm pretty sure that's a logical response. You know, that he says it's nothing to do with immigration status. Well. The fact that he was allowed to be in this country was the fundamental reason that the attack happened. If he was not here, if he were not here, then the attack wouldn't happen anyway in the first place. It was a massive scandal and then we have all these left-wing liberal lawyers trying to change the argument. They're basically defending criminals at this point. Anyway, let me know what you think. I'm Maya Tusi and we are the media.